Well, everybody knows it's a bubbling voice now, so that's for sure. And it's a beautiful voice, that one. One of unity, one of togetherness, one of peace, one of love, you know. That's the way forward. Oga, Oga. <laughs> The African Highway Podcast Network, I'm Dumi Mabena, and this is Zimbabwean Voices, the show where we focus on Zimbabweans that are doing great work to use their platform to shift the Zimbabwean narrative for the better. For this episode, episode six, I had the honor of interviewing my cousin, my brother, one of my best friends, Hilton Bariki, who is the captain of the Sables rugby team. I thought it'd be great to have this conversation for three main reasons. Uh, the first being the notion of role models and the importance for, for children to have someone to look up to in their community as a role model. When I, as a child, I can speak personally, I really looked up to athletes. And it's even more important to have, to be able to share the stories of our own role models from our own community. The second uh, was this notion of what it means to lead a country in, in your particular field. What does that mean? What does that entail? And what do you intend to achieve from that? Um, I think it's important to hear the story of that and, and how one can use such a platform to help shift um, the a narrative of a particular team for the better. And then thirdly, what it means to be a Zimbabwean group of people striving for world class. When you look at Zimbabwe's rugby talent, we basically ooze it out. And many of the best players in the, in the world have often been from Zimbabwe, but played for other countries. So with Hilton being at the helm of the captain of the Sables right now, what I wanted to get from him is we give away over talent. You are here as a captain right now at the helm. What is different now as you strive for World Club, for a World Club qualification, world class level? What has changed? What belief systems have you put in place? And what do you intend to leave as a legacy whilst you're here and after you've left? So I hope you guys enjoy it. And yeah, enjoy it. Um, Hilton, thank you so much for the time. Um, so for those of you who are listening, I think, you know, Hilton Barrick, is one of my best mates slash cousin. And I've known you, Hilton, since I was f five years old. Um, and the reason why I think we're going to have, th the reason why I th thought we'd have this conversation specifically is because one, of course, I you know admire you so much. And I think uh, it's been a privilege to kind of see your journey from five years old up until where you are now um, as the Sables captain for, uh, for, for rugby. And I thought it'd be good to kind of just ask you a little bit about your story and kind of <clears throat> your journey to date. I think specifically because I think as a young Zimbabwean, um, we, I know my belief is that we are more than just uh, inflation and the rate or bond <laughs> notes or <laughs> you know <what> saying? <laughs> like, we're so much more than that. And I think it's important to shed light on um, some of the stories so that, you know, we can inspire each other and those who come after us. So, so thanks for the time. And I guess maybe just to start, you know, I'll ask you just to take us back. Well, to first, I'll ask you how you're doing as a beginning, like what's been happening, you know, with yourself, with, with, with the Sables and what have you, and we can start there. <laughs> cool. Dim, thanks so much for... Uh the kind intro uh, thanks so much for having me um cool. it's always an cool. honor and a privilege to to sit with you and have a chat um yeah man like it's been it's been a roller coaster um couple of months um sure. i'm in a bubble at the moment um we are <laughs> currently preparing for um the rugby world cup um qualifiers the first round so sure. so it's, it's nice to just be back on the park, back training. Um, so mm. good to see the boys. I mean, you should have seen the first day that we came into camp. It was like, yeah. literally like going, you know, like your first day of school or back to school, let's say yeah, you're, yeah. you're like back to school when you haven't seen your mates and you're yeah, catching yeah, up yeah. over like what you would holiday and that kind of vibe. Sure. So it was like that. It was just awesome to see guys again and also to see some yeah. of the new faces um, mm. that have come in and joined us. So we're in a cool. bubble at the moment preparing for... Um, preparing for the qualifiers um sure. obviously you know with in the world that we live in at the moment it throws you hurdles left right and center yeah. um with covid yeah. and that kind of stuff yeah so we've had to um adjust um in terms of some of the things that we um that we normally used to when we come into camp um sure. but i feel like it's really brought us together as a squad um so it's just sure. it's been really good to just be back um 
to be throwing a ball around again and just having fun with yeah. the mates. Good, man, good. And, you know, obviously you've been involved in the under-20 setup, the cheetah setup for so Sabans rugby as well. And, of course, Sables, probably for the past, I'll say, what, five, six years or so now, you'll be what you consider like a senior player and captain as well now. So the last time Zim was at the World Cup was, I think, 1989, if I'm not mistaken, or yeah. the Sables specifically, 1989. And I think for, for years now, we've been just trying to chip away at this elusive dream of qualifying for the Rugby World Cup. Um, with you, I guess, at the helm of leadership from a player's perspective, what do you think is different now um, versus maybe other years when you're involved with Sables in the past? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I've been, I've been involved in, um, this would be my third um, qualifying campaign. Sure. And the last two, um, you know, the, the first one that I was involved in 2014, um, mm. really close. We were literally, um, you know, a couple of points away from going to a World Cup. And we just fell short. I mean, probably one of the toughest days of my rugby career because um, sure. we were so, so close. Um, mm. Then, you know, 2018 came and, you know, that was a bit of a disaster. Um, mm. Although, you know, we had um, people that were backing us as sponsors and, and, and those kind of guys mm. that jumped on to, to help us. It would, mm -hmm. wasn't really run properly, but I feel like the biggest difference that um, I'm experiencing now compared to the other years is just time together. Sure. Time together is sure. gold. It's literally gold. And this process started in 2019. Uh, 2019, mm -hmm. um, you know, they brought our coach, Brendan Dawson, back um, mm -hmm. in to lead us. And mm -hmm. he came in with a vision of, okay, this is how we need to do it. We need to go on a, on a four or three-year cycle where we need yes. to get guys playing together as regularly as possible. And yes. it showed. We, we went away um, in 2019, early 2019. We played in the Super mm -hmm. Sport Challenge in South Africa against... Mm -hmm. Uh, South African franchises, and it was a good learning curve for us. Yeah, we, you know, results yeah. wise wasn't it was great, tough, but good. But, yeah. it, but it was really good. We got to play mm. uh, quality teams week in mm. week out. We mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of guys that are coming um, out of Zim rugby, they haven't been in a professional setup or, or experienced a professional setup, yes. and that's what we had in 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 South Africa. You know, it was mm -hmm. run very professionally. We trained like professionals. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that just kind of carried it on. And we went into the Victoria Cup where we played Kenya, Zambia, yeah. uh, Uganda. And we mm -hmm. ended up taking that tournament, you know, with one game to spare. And it just shows yes. that what we, what we had learned in that tournament, we took into um, the African tournament. And we mm -hmm. managed to implement what we had learned into that tournament. And it was very successful for us. Obviously, sure, 2020 sure. happened. Um, 2020 yes. hit us really hard. We did not expect it. But we wanted to keep our momentum going. Um, mm. I know that the, the backroom staff and the management were working overtime to make sure that we had games throughout 2020. Mm. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Mm. Um, mm. Then 2021 came. Uh, you know when you know they planned this um, this uh, this camp that we're currently in at the moment, yes. Yes. where you know we were brought together for eight weeks. And that mm. this eight weeks has been gold. You know, we've managed mm. to get two games. We had a couple more games lined up. Unfortunately, COVID didn't allow us. Mm. But just training, uh, being around each other, working together, learning what yes. someone does, is, is, it goes such a long way. Compared to years before mm. where we met, literally a week of the test match, some guys would arrive on a Thursday before a test match and we're expected mm. to go out and win where mm -hmm. you don't really know the guy you're playing with. No so time. now we've yeah. managed to learn combinations, learn how guys play, and it's yes. definitely going to um, help us going forward. Cool. Now, it makes sense. I think, I remember, I, I remember firstly watching that 2009, I think it was you said 2000, not 2019, but the 2000 and when we lost the game to Kenya. No, we beat the, Kenya, but I think we, we lost we to Namibia. Kenya, but we, we beat Kenya, we yeah, lost to Namibia. Yeah. Um, geez, that was heartbreaking. But I think I, I remember. I remember you just you mentioned about this. Now it's scary to think that we literally were a couple of points away from a World Cup, and really you had spent three weeks together as a team. Yeah, we it's, we got together. We had a. I remember, it's I remember crazy. that very. I remember that very clearly. We literally had ten days. We had a ten day camp. Or oh, ten days. We literally, <laughs> got, we literally got together for Jeez. ten days. No sponsorship. Sure. 
no, no one backing us. Um, I think there was a company that eventually came on board um, mm. on the last, literally the last day before we traveled. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And we had nothing, literally had nothing. We, all we had was a coach, one coach, a manager. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was, and our, our coach at the time, Brendan Dawson, who's our coach now, he was yes. running the backs and forwards by himself. Or well, sometimes we'd have to run the backs. Um, so backs would look after themselves. You'd deal with yeah. the forwards. And we were literally one try away from, from playing in, World uh, in the World Cup in England. That's huge. So I, I think it's two things. And so now we're saying we have time. We've got sponsorship. Yeah. We've got sufficient management and coaching staff. I think for me, the main question, which I think is the most important question on top of all of these things is to say, again, I'll, get, I'll go a little bit back into your, your, your history and whatever, but this is the last point I'll touch on this is to say, yeah, is the belief there? And I'll, and I'll tell you why. Often I feel as though, I used to see, for example, let's use an example, Wales. Wales, this is before they started beating the spring box. It's like, yeah. they would go 20, 30 points, let's say 20 points up against Africa. And somehow, some, some way, somehow, they would always find a way to lose. Always. <laughs> Similarly, always. I, I've, watched, I've watched, and I've watched, say, so maybe cheaters, the cheaters rugby do this way, they'll be up in the tournament final. It's yeah. literally extra time, like the game's done, all we have to do is kick it out. Or, and then, and I've seen this on two athletes, so the, the Olympic qualifiers as one. And there's yeah. also maybe, say, the Hong Kong, where we'll be ahead, the game's done, the opposite team get the ball. And some way, somehow, <laughs> we, we, we find a way to, to, of course, to lose the game. And that's not to say, because yeah. guys are incompetent, but I think the question I have to me is to say, sometimes like when you don't like believe something is for, yeah. for you, yeah. some way, someone will, you'll find a way to sabotage it, whether that's in the preparation, whether that's during the game, uh, you know, if that makes sense. So I guess for me, the question becomes like, is the belief there, one, and, and, and yeah. what, and uh, at least conversations around that idea being being had at this point um, in the, in the quest for, yeah. for World Cup qualification. No, you 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 hundred percent right. I mean, I was um, involved in those in those in those two mm. games. Well, I was involved mm. in the one in Hong Kong, and I was injured mm. in the Olympic qualifier where we you know yes. we lost right at the day. Literally, uh, mm. the same situation, mm. pretty much identical. Mm. And just to answer your question, I think the the belief is definitely there. Um, mm. We've gone into this tournament or this period um, now where, you know, the coaches are, we, we're starting to talk about it a lot more. We, we're starting to, the, in the way that we deal with, um, with the way that we talk about it, we're not, we're not saying things like um, if we qualify, it's when we qualify. When, so we're almost, when. Speaking, we're, we're Speak almost it. speaking it into existence. Sure. Every single time we're in a team meeting, every single time mm -hmm. we're on the field, we're mm. training as though we're playing against a Namibia or a Kenya in a final of the sure. World Cup, of the Africa Cup qualifiers. And sure. I think that is so important because if you start preparing yourself to play like you're playing in a final, by the time yeah. the final comes, you would have told yourself, yeah. I've played this a million times. Imagine I've literally done this a million games. times sure. over and over again. And mm -hmm. I feel like in the, in the past our mental toughness was the biggest issue. That mm. was the biggest issue. You could not fault our talent. Yes, mm. our preparation was not great, but mm. we, we made it work. We found a way to make it work. Mm. But mm. It, the, the last 10 minutes, the last five minutes is what let us down. And that, I believe, that comes down mm. to your mental toughness and how, mm. yeah, how tough you are mentally to get through that period. Mm. Because like you said, sometimes we'd be in the lead and we're like, you're so shocked. You're like, how is this actually happening? Like, what? <laughs> we're not meant to be in the lead. Well, yeah. We're, the new we're not meant like to be yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You almost bring yourself down because you're like, listen, yeah. we're not, this is not meant to happen. Yeah. And then you find that, I guess, other teams like feed off that and they kind of realize, okay, these guys actually don't back themselves. Then they just start hitting us and hitting mm. us and hitting us before you know mm. we've lost. So mm. I think the difference between then and now is just how we are approaching things and how we're almost mm. speaking it into existence every single time. Mm -hmm. The conversations that we're starting to have, it's sure. when we qualify, 
when sure. we play in a final. Sure. Uh, whereas in the past it was, yeah, if we make it or we yeah, maybe when we make it, there's that. Yeah. So now yeah. it's like everyone is saying we are going to be there and we're speaking it into existence every single sure. time. And it's, yeah, that's, that's wonderful, I guess. And then it's believing that Zimbabwe can be synonymous with excellence and that we exactly. also deserve to have a place in the sun as well with England, exactly. with New Zealand, with Scotland yeah. or whoever, right? And I think that's like, yeah, that's critical. Okay, cool. So, you know, well, glad things are going well and that you guys are on your way to qualify us so or wishing you all the best um, on no, that. Thank you so much. I'll take, I guess, a little bit back to maybe a bit to the beginning. Um, yeah. I think very much, very much we'll often find, okay, you know, you've had a really illustrious um, career and I think there are not many, I'd say like maybe young Black Samoans who have actually been able to go and play professional and, and, um, and play at the highest level. So just to take it back so you can see, you know, what the roots were um, in, get in, the, yeah. in the journey, um, in your rugby journey specifically to date. So first, yeah, where were you born? Where did you go to school? All, all that good stuff. And I'll ask you questions as and when I need to. Awesome. Yeah, so born and bred, uh, Zimbabwean boy, um, born in Harare. Sure. Sure. Uh, come from a, a, you know, I have a younger brother um, who is um, currently playing in France. Um, sure. And, you know, he, we've, yeah, we, we, we have well, my mom and my dad and, you know, we've, mm. We've grown up uh, loving sport, uh, love playing sport. I've always been an outdoors person. Uh, love being on the outdoors, loved playing yeah. sport. I tried all kinds of sport. Um, yeah. But I just, I fell in love. I fell in love with rugby and cricket from a very young age. That that was what I loved doing. Um, yeah. I remember, yeah. you know, we used to drag our parents halfway around um, Zim or... Um, yeah. South Africa to come and watch us play sport on like during the week. Uh, yeah. You know, they always made an effort to come and watch us play. Um, mm, and that was mm. pretty awesome. So I went to, I started off at Heritage, um, sure. Heritage School in Harare. I uh, did grade mm. one to grade five there. I guess that's where mm. I, I fell in love with sport. I met a guy called Patrick Scott Martin. Um, and he had mm. boys that were at Heritage. And mm. he's the one who introduced me to, to cricket and rugby. Um, yes. Because growing up, um, no one in my family had really played um, yes. rugby or cricket. Yes. So I kind of just picked it up from, from being around people or at school. Yes. Um, so that was pretty awesome. And that's where, you know, that's where I just fell in love with it. Um, cool. Then so I moved on that, on that point, after. Maybe, maybe on that point, I'll just pause you there. Um, so yeah. rugby, and, rugby and cricket, I think really unconventional parts. And at least at that stage, there was no one who we can say was that looked like uh, like you know black young Zimbabwean who was playing at a professional level. It wasn't the only black yeah. person I knew who played rugby that looked like me was George Gregan. I remember that like yes. at that yes. stage George Gregan was the only person of color you would see. Do you remember like yeah. for the Brumbies? He was the yep. only person of color. Not that you mention it. I'm, you know what? He's, he was the, the only one. He's the only person of color, or at least uh, when we were kids. But I want to suppose you to yeah. say. And I remember you mentioned Patrick Scott Martin. Um, of course, for context, I know I, I played a little bit with you sports yeah. wise during this time. But I know when, when you mentioned his name, it kind of took me back. He was a really critical component, I think, to your sporting childhood. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, what did kind of he mean to you, I guess, from like a cricketing and rugby perspective? Oh, and, he... and, 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 and does he know that he, does he know that you meant, you know, he Honestly, meant that much to you from that stage? You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I don't. I don't think he does, and I don't think I have um, shown it enough to him. Sure. But honestly, my career would not have started if it wasn't for Patrick Scott Martin. Sure. I don't know what he saw in me. He invested mm. a lot of time in me, um, mm. and I must. I must thank him um, honestly for for seeing something in me, believing in mm. me, and and working mm. with me uh, because. Mm the journey that I'm on now would not have happened if it wasn't for him. Um, so yeah, he played a crucial role. Um, Cause as I said, um, I came from a family that wasn't, um, uh, didn't have a cricket or a rugby background. background um, sure. So it was, it was literally things that I was picking up at school and I didn't mm -hmm. realize that, you know, I had, um, 
I hadn't really, I hadn't never picked up a bat. I never picked up mm. a cricket ball. Um, mm. You know, all I kind of knew was football at the time. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yep. the time that he invested in me um, was special because of, you know, I just look at my journey now and where I'm at, you know, mm. all credit must go to him. It's funny because it's almost like I didn't even realize that when he fed that into you, it also had a spillover into Farai as well. Yeah. In you know, order to for context is your brother as well. Because I didn't even because you were so obsessed as a child with rugby and cricket. Oh my god. I remember oh. you, we used to on Saturday mornings there would be <laughs> school schools Monday to Friday. And on Saturdays there would yeah. be like cricket, cricket on Saturdays at school in the morning. Yeah. And every Saturday you'd go to Heritage to school. <laughs> To play cricket. I remember with, I used to come and spend out. the night. I used to come spend the night in your house. I do. <laughs> I used to come spend the night in your right. house, then go to Heritage, yeah. walk to Heritage in the morning for, for cricket. cricket. I, I was so obsessed. Um, mm. Like I said, I just fell in love with the sport. And mm. I think it's uh, it's so hard to explain. Like, even to this day, um, mm. I promise you, I can sit through a whole test match from literally from <laughs> day one until day yeah, five. Yeah. Yeah. I'll watch everything so yeah i think it was, so it was just from a young age i was just so obsessed and i was so hungry to want to learn to want sure. to um to want to achieve what i'd been seeing because when i started playing that's when i started realizing oh okay cool that this thing is actually you know a thing that people play i uh, started yes. watching tv uh started mm. picking up on what people do on tv and i was like so, you know what i actually want to be like these guys Yes. So I think yes. that's where it kind of started. So I'd say the seed was granted there, sure. Grade sure. four, yeah. Grade four is probably when I was like, you know what? I think this is something that I might actually want to do. Got you. Okay, cool. So so we're playing, I can assume Colts rugby at this stage, and then yeah. we move from we move from Heritage to St. John's, uh, St. John's prep. Yeah. So um, what was that? What was that what was that transition like? Oh, it was awesome. It was very easy uh, because mm -hmm. literally everyone that I was with at Heritage, probably what eighty percent of the guys <laughs> from Heritage moved to St yeah. John's. Um, sure. So that transition was very easy because um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I already had friends or I already knew people um, yeah. that I was going into. You know, when you started started a new school, you don't really yeah. know anyone there. It can get really tough. But I think. Mm -hmm. Just having guys come over with with me made it so much mm -hmm. easier. Although, out of everyone that moved from Heritage, I was the only one in um, the, the class that I was in. So I yes. literally had to make friends from, from scratch. Whereas from scratch. all the other boys were uh, yes. kind of uh, in the same classes. Grouped together. Uh, sure. But that was pretty cool. I made some really good friends. Um, friends mm -hmm. that uh, played a huge um, influence in, in, in my career. Sure. Um, at St. John's and going forward. So, so that was a really yes. cool move. And I think it was an awesome move in terms of my sport as well. Started yes. taking sport really, really seriously uh, when I moved yes. to St. John's. Um, so that was a, a, good, a good time in my, in my uh, schooling year. Cool, okay. And um, I remember at St. John's, you were also deputy head boy. Um, and, and I think pretty... Pretty impressive feat, considering you literally are there for like ten months. <laughs> Honestly, you literally, literally there for like a year, <laughs> like ten I months. I literally remember that day so um, <laughs> Yeah, we were sat yeah. at St John College. Uh, yes. There was prize giving. It was prize yes. giving, and um, we were sat there, and then they were announcing mm. the head boy and deputy. And mm. obviously, think uh, yeah, there was always that there was that chat of uh, you know oh, maybe, maybe Hilton, uh, and I was like, what sure, yeah, can't yeah. happen. It yeah. can't happen. I've been there for a year. Sitting, yeah, yeah. I was, literally, I was there for a year. I remember just yeah. sitting there, and I just got my, I just got a cell phone. I remember that clearly. Yes. And I was on my phone during mm -hmm. the prize giving, mm -hmm. and then I hear my name, and I'm like, "What? What? The, what's going on here? <laughs> this, this, this is wild." And everyone's <laughs> looking at me, and I'm, I'm obviously not meant to be on my phone. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, like I said, did not expect it at all. Um, sure. But, but yeah, it was, it was fun, fun memories, awesome uh, achievement, something that I, that I look back on and I'm, I'm really proud of. Okay. I know since then, I think you have been actually able to go back and speak at St. John's Prep um, to some of the guys yeah. there. When you, when you go, what's like the general you know, theme around some of the motivational talks you've given them? Um, oh, it's, you know? 
Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. It was awesome. It was good to be back. I hadn't actually been back to St. John's in a, in a very long time, actually. So just yes. walking through those corridors mm. was pretty awesome. Going into my old class, mm. it still looks the same. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> still, yeah looks, St. John's, still looks the St. John's, same. Really, they really need to invest more in the, in the facilities. They need to they invest. Really I need promise to, and, still, and, they and I love St. John's, those, but they still, really, same they desk, those, same chalkboard. They still still chalkboard. Have my name... My name was engraved in the desk. I was like, this is what I'm I did John's after how many years ago. <laughs> like, anyway, that's, that's no wild. shit. <laughs> but no, it was awesome. It was awesome yeah. to um to go back to see some of the teachers that were um there when I was still there. Um yes. and just to just to catch up and 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 sit yes. and just have a chat to them about you know the memories um yes. that you know we 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 shared at St. John's. So that was awesome. And also just to speak to the boys, uh, just to encourage them um, to dream big, to, mm. you know, chase their, their dreams and their goals uh, mm. because, you know, the sky's the limit and there's yes. so many opportunities out there. So it was quite nice. Yeah. And, and it was also pretty cool that a few of them actually um, knew me or had heard about me. Um, hey, so that was also cool. pretty cool. That was also pretty yeah, cool. Oh, gosh. To, uh, you know, have, I'm actually out here. Like, well, the, this, this boy is actually... Okay, cool. Exactly, exactly. And then, you know, they're asking me, what was it like when you were here and mm. what's changed and all of that. So it's good to share to share those those memories with them. So I really enjoyed okay. that. Okay. No, that's, that's, that's awesome. I, yeah, I think back to like maybe St. John's prep days and you think, you know, you're, you're bright eyed and you don't know what the future has in store. So I think it's really awesome that you actually got to go back and kind of yeah. you know, sow into them. Some of the things that you've learned across the years. Um, okay, cool. But now here's I think interesting. Typically, of course, we go the natural move from St. John's Papers to go to St. John's College, right? Yeah. Or St. George's or Peter or what or what yeah. have you. As a normal sporting, you know, sporting based school as well. You then choose to say, I want to go to South Africa. What <laughs> inspired that move? Like, how, like. Was that always a thing that oh, was in your mind? How did that even come to fruition? You know, it was never in my mind. My my thing was always finish up at St John's, mm -hmm. go to the college, uh, yeah. St John's College. That's what mm -hmm. everyone was doing. Um, mm -hmm. That's what all my friends were doing. Uh, well, mm -hmm. most of my uh, my schoolmates were doing. And then um, I had a really uh, close relationship with a good friend of mine, uh, Paul Vincent, and yes. he wasn't going to the college so we started chatting and he was my he was my best friend um at school and he was actually the head boy at the mm. prep school and uh yeah we were really mm. really really close because we played we played uh, cricket together we played rugby okay. together okay. um sure. yeah so we, we were really good mates and he started saying listen i'm going to south africa and i was like yo my my best mate is leaving me like i i need i need to go wherever he's yes. going yeah, you know, I needed yeah. to go with these yeah. guys. Conversation yeah. started with my parents. I approached them. I said, listen, you know, Paul's going to South Africa. I think I might be keen. And wow. they were like, there's no way you're going to South Africa. That was the first conversation that we had. <laughs> oh, oh really? Listen. Really? Yeah, no, they were like, Are you, there's wow. no way you're going to South Africa. Wow. So after, you know, trying to speak them into letting me go. I didn't know, I just, I didn't know the story. I didn't know this was even yeah. a thing. Oh my God. I didn't know you peer nah, pressure thing. Like, no. We need to. <laughs> I did the story. They're like, no, no, that's wow. that's not happening. I was like, yeah. so then I eventually got them to sit with yeah. Paul's parents. Um, yeah. They started talking because yeah. uh, our moms had um, uh, St. John's uh, parents' engagements and things, so they started yes. chatting. Um, yes. And you know, Paul's mom convinced my mom. She said, "Listen, just go and have a look. Just go and mm. see the place mm. and have mm. a look." Um, so mm. parents eventually um, agreed on it. So we went to South Africa, but obviously we just didn't want to set our minds on one school. So we applied to a couple of other schools. Uh, Marisburg yes. College was one of them. Um, Hilton College was another one. Mm. Um, applied to Michael House and applied to St. Charles as well. Um, yes. And then, so obviously I told my parents about this. And I think my mom ended up speaking to your mom about this as well. And then, yes. hey, we just made it one big, we just made it one big holiday, go to South Africa <laughs> and, you know, go check it out. 
yeah, yeah. Let's see what this Michael House was all about. And I remember, yes. I remember driving into those gates, and I was yeah. like, so initially, I went to Massive yes. College first. Yes. I went to Massive yes. College, and I was like, now nah, I could get a feel from when I got there. I was like, nope, this is not for me. Sure, I can't. I can't. I can't sure. do this. But I remember mm-hmm. driving into Michael House, and I was like, it's, it's done. It's it's decided. It's this wrap. is me. before you before you even get to main. He said, I think it's official. I thought Mass Bay College was, was like, quite awesome. Quite I was like, this is pretty dope. But you're like, nah, let's let's just see the next school. Let's see the next yeah, school. Yeah, let's just, I remember just driving up Warriors Walk, driving up mm. Warriors Walk. And I was mm. like, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is the place. Like, yeah. this is the place yeah. that I need to come to. Um, yeah. Went through with the interviews and yeah, managed to get a, a spot. Obviously, I would have loved to get a scholarship there, but I didn't end up actually getting a scholarship. Yes. Um, but just to be um, given a, 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 a spot at the school, very yes. uh, prestigious school, was just yes. amazing for me. I mean, you know, a, a young Harare boy, um, yes. you know, yes. leaving Zim to go to South Africa. Yes. Yeah. It was just special. It was just, uh, it was just a really, really awesome Thank moment. You. I remember my parents and I, that's when that's when the post used to work in zim and i remember my parents getting a, a, like an a, envelope a with, with mail with to say mind, yeah with yeah. the mind, back at the top yeah. and then with yeah. the acceptance letter oh best one of the best moments of my life for sure dude that's terrific and and, and that's such a wonderful story and, and as you and as you um retell that story i didn't even realize something just clicked in my mind so when we were at when you were at um, when you made the transition from Heritage to St John's, I remember I had done a little. I had moved. I left Zim and gone to Canada for a while. Then we actually came back. Yeah. And we came back, right? And we we're like, should we go to Heritage or, or or what school should we go to? And I think you, of course, yeah. were saying, "Now nah, we're going to St John's. This is the this the move." I was like, "Okay, cool." Yeah, and then I literally just I just, I just I just I just I just plugged in like accordingly. That's one. You plugged in there. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't plug the recording. That's one. But then two, like that's that story of you going to like saying to your parents, we gotta to go to South Africa. This this is the move that we have to make. Then you, of course, go. Um, it's funny because I remember that trip vividly, like so clearly. And I literally went, yeah, just to I went to escort you on your scholarship interview. I wasn't, I literally just exactly. went to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As a scholarship interview, I'm just gonna go there. And then I don't know, I think mom was like, just, or your mom was like, just take your uniform, Jimmy, just take your uniform. Just take your uniform. I'll be like, okay, I don't know why I need my uniform, yeah. but okay, cool. So I, t- I, so I remember I pack my uniform, I get everything together. Then we, of course, we, we drive up. And I think you and Paul had boy, David Teddy boy, you had all of like your, your cream the white, blazers. The white blazer. Yeah, 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 white blazers, <laughs> your badges, head boy, David Teddy boy. With the badges, with, with, with the badges. With, with all, your, your, all, of that, all of that fancy stuff. And then I, I left all my badges at, at home, I didn't bring anything. So I just had like a basic, yeah. like green blazer, nothing. <laughs> so I'm just there like quietly just walking around. And of course I'm blown away by the, by the whole, the whole day was just like, I was just blown away. It was unreal. It. it was just unbelievable. But I think the thing that stood out for me, like then you had your interview and then I think it went to how it went. And then, I, then you leave the interview and then you're talking to Paul Fleischak, who's the deputy, yeah. who was the deputy headmaster at the time. Then he, then he goes, oh, um, and who are you? He's like, oh, this is Dumi, this is Hilton's cousin, Wada Wada. He's like, so are you, why aren't you applying? Why aren't you applying? He's like, no, I just came for, to escort these guys on scholarship. He's like, no, you should also apply. Here are the application forms. Here are the application forms. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. So I just, so I said, I, I think I reached out those. And then of course, three months later, you know, we're on our merry way back to South Africa for, for school. But I say that sorry to say, like, yeah, I think you've been very I, I didn't realize how influential you had been on those two particular points. One, of course, I want to go into St. John's and, and think, then in the St. John's to yeah. Africa move as well. And I think you helped like set the way for both of those moves. So yeah, forever thankful for the, for those. And I two. think and I think also obviously um when you had left uh, for Canada, I think our mm. our our friend or our relationship kind of drifted away a bit but obviously sure. you know we weren't really seeing each yeah. other we're chatting we're yeah. spending time with each other but i think mm-hmm. that that period um kind of brought us back together again 
Yes. Because, you yes. know, we were, we were now starting to do the same things. We we're going to the same school. Um, yes. When I went to St. John's, then you came to St. John's. And then yeah. when I was going to Michael House, then you came to Michael and House. And we went to the same So that kind of yeah. just built that, that relationship and friendship yes. again, which is yes. which is so awesome, man. Yes. No, it was, it's, it was terrific. It's terrific and, and absolutely. Oh, it's awesome great. memories. And, and then we go to, then, we, then you're at school for, for these five years. Was that, what was that period like? You know, being away from home because look, let's face it, right? It wasn't the, the most for what when we think we think boarding school, the most would think is we're going to Marondera or somewhere close to yeah. Ari or what have you. That's that's the furthest you're going, let alone a whole country, let alone yeah. You know, only thing I knew about South African high schools is when I'd watch the St. John's uh festival on TV. That's the most yes. ex, that's yeah. the most exposure I'd ever had to South African high school. So what was that like? I guess like on a macro level, what was that whole experience like? Largely good, bad, or was it just all great for the most part? Mm -hmm. oh, you know, initial stages was tough. And I remember, mm -hmm. I'm sure you remember, um, initial stages were very, very tough. And as you said, you know, we when you think of boarding school and you're from Zim, you, the furthest you're thinking is maybe one hour. You know, you mm -hmm. can call your mom or your dad and say, listen, uh, come visit me, whatever. They'll get into a car and they'll yeah. easily drive up. But like I said, we're in a different country. Yeah. It was how many flights? Two flights? Two, two flights, flights to get to... Two flights two and flights. A, an hour and a half drive. Drive. To get to my... <laughs> With the middle of nowhere. <laughs> the middle of nowhere. Exactly, the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Two flights, yeah. an hour yeah. and a half. So it's not like... It's, they can't just like get on a flight and just come and visit. Yeah. So yeah. initially it was tough. Um, mm. And I remember, I remember this day so clearly. We... Um, so I'd made the 14A cricket side and Paul also made it. So it was nice that both of us were playing in the same cricket side. And, and, and I remember he Vincent. was... This is from Zim, Paul Vincent from Zim. This is Paul, Paul Vincent, Vincent from, from Zim, yeah. Sure. And he was very homesick. I was also very homesick. And literally, I remember you, you were the tougher one. You were the tougher one out of the both I, of us. I remember that. Milton, I Milton used to cry. My way used, used to cry. I used to cry. I could not. <laughs> used to I cry. Could not, I could not. <laughs> that was tough. Family. It was... It, it was a, it was it was we're twelve years old when you think about it. We're twelve, yeah, literally, and never like, been away from, from home. I think the longest I had been away from home was maybe a night, and um, so out, it was really yeah. tough. Yeah, um, and I remember we were playing cricket that day, and um, Paul and I batted. We batted quite well. Then um, we were fielding, mm -hmm. and then, I don't know something happened to him. He got injured or something like that, and his aunt was there um, mm. watching us play. Uh, she yeah. took us out for the weekend. And yeah. then I remember coming off the field, going back to school. And mm. I remember, I think Paul used to, uh, he was in the bed next to me. I remember getting mm. back to school and everything was gone. He, his bedding was gone, trunk was gone. And then I remember our housemaster, Mr. Kale, calling mm. me into his office. Or he actually called me to his house that day. Mm. Um, or I think it was his office both of us were there his office. and then yeah. he was like guys Paul's yeah. left Paul's gone and I remember that I just I just completely broke down I was like I, yeah. I can't I, I'm also yeah. I'm, I'm on the next flight I need to get out of there <laughs> I need to leave I can't you know be it. here yeah. it was tough but, it was tough and I remember yeah. we, we weren't allowed to speak to our parents but I think Mr. Kale let us speak to our parents at that time because obviously it was just a very difficult mm. time and I just remember my my dad saying, "There's no ways you're coming back to Zim. You are going to stick it out. You are you're going there. to stay there. You're going to see this thing my, through." My mom was ready to book me on the next flight. My dad is like, "There's no ways he, he's coming back. You're staying there." And <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was probably the best decision I've ever yeah. made in my life. To choose to, to literally stick it out, just right? hanging yeah. in there, mm. hanging in there for for you know that that week uh, well, the weeks mm. that came after that mm. was the mm. best decision I've ever made in my life. And mm. I'm, yeah, I'm just so happy that I stuck it out because you're yeah. just staying there just opens so many doors. So many doors. Absolutely. I remember that day clearly. And I remember I only cried two days for at those five mm. years of school. I only cried two or not. I cried twice. The first day yeah. was when my mom left. When, when I said bye to yeah. my mom, <laughs> that was the first time. <laughs> I remember, I remember crying that day, like, man, you're that I cried to, you know, that's, I've really, that's your mother. I'm 12. I remember that exactly. day. And the, and the second time I cried was 
the day Paul left. I remember him coming into yeah. the dorm, packing everything up. I remember just like, I think I cried because we're the only three Zimbabweans out there. We're meant to be like, exactly. oh, this is the we thing we're trying to do here. Like, this, is the thing, this is the thing we're trying to do here. We're trying to see this, do this five years here. Now for two weeks, he did yeah. fails. And I was strong the whole time, but I think that day I cried. I said, yo, nah, this is, I, I don't know. If, for some reason, I think it, it made me, it triggered me um, emotionally. But, yeah. you know, so thankfully, of course, you stayed. And you, what, we did the five, you did the, you know, you did six years, actually, because we did the five years, you did the six years. years. Yeah. yeah. So I guess yeah. maybe I'll come back, to, I'll come back to the six years, but yeah. one, Michael House towards your, what, what did it mean to you in terms of like your growth and development as a young man or a teenager and also relative to, I guess, your career, what did it do for, for that? Oh, it definitely taught me a lot. I think being away from home, uh, being at a boarding school, just mm. teaches you a lot. It just teaches you to grow up very quickly, um, mm. because you don't have your you don't have your mom there to do um, stuff for you. Uh, mm. We don't have your dad there to do stuff for you. You almost, mm. I mean, we, we were very lucky that you know there, there was quite a bit of stuff that was done for us. But at the same it's time, a, yeah, there are lots of yeah. life lessons that you that you got out of it. Um, mm. So it definitely helped my growth. Um, obviously, yeah. there there were there were a couple of years where I strayed. You know, as a as a teenage boy is growing up, um, they do stray. Uh, you know that that deep yeah. lock year where you think you are, you know, you've yeah, you've yeah, left yeah. your your now you think you're grown up and start doing things. Yeah. So there are certain things that I in that year that I definitely regret, but I learned a lot from yes um yes. so in terms of my growth i think michael has played a huge role um in, in the person that i am today mm. 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 no for sure and and i guess relative to to rugby which who was the most instrumental um let's say coach that you had there with respect to your your rugby or cricket I I had, suppose, oh, or whoever was more in, yeah but rugby yeah, but but rugby more specifically yeah I had some awesome coaches um, throughout my time at Michael House. Um, from the time that I started, I started with Mr. Ferreira. He backed mm. me as a, as a young 12-year-old playing against, mm. you know, some big boys. And he backed <laughs> me. He backed my skill. He saw something in me and, you know, he yeah. put me in the deep end. I, was, I remember I was playing fly half um, at the time yeah. as a very skinny yeah. 12-year-old. I remember 30, I was 37 kgs. 37? Um, I was in... I was 37 kgs when I was in uh, Eva. <laughs> I was tiny. I was tiny. Jeez. And, uh, and he backed me. So he was one, one guy that uh, played a huge role. Um, Adrian Moran in my under 16 year, under yes. 15 and under 16 year was I huge. Remember that. Um, I remember that, yeah. But I would say the most influential guy um, in terms of my, my high school rugby career was Reno Cornbrick. He never coached me. Um, mm -hmm. He was director of rugby at the time, so he actually never coached me. But he he saw something in me. Um, you know, it goes back to, mm -hmm. to to Patrick Scott Martin. Patrick Scott Martin mm -hmm. saw something in me, mm -hmm. and that's exactly like Reno Combrink. He saw something mm -hmm. in me. He mm -hmm. invested a lot of time in me. I remember he sat me down after my under sixteen year, mm -hmm. and he said, "Listen, do you want to play Craven League?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, of course. And then he was like, no, no, no. I want you to go away and think about it. Do really you want think, to play? Like, really think about really it. Really think like, about really it. Really think about it. Yeah. Mm. Do you want to play? Mm. Went away, thought about it, and I was like, yes, I will do anything. And then he said, I want mm. you to trust me. And I said, mm. I will trust you. And he says, I want you to move to Scrum Off. And for me at the mm. time, I played a little bit of Scrum Off in grade seven. Um, yeah. But scrum off was not for me. I love playing yeah. ten. I love controlling. I love. Yes. I love being in the thick things. I love making decisions. And he said, "I yes. promise you, if you want to play Craven League, move to scrum off." Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Huge. Huge. And and what was it? And did he basically coach you to be the scrum off that kind of put you in that kind of incubation period? That you know, because now you're a scrum off and you're the national captain for Zim. Um, what was that process of incubation like when he was coaching you to be, you know, that's kind of scrum off? It was tough. It was really, really tough because um, I remember this so clearly. My, my left hand pass was nowhere. And I don't know how I managed <laughs> to get away with it 
yeah. all those yeah. years, mm. I could not pass left-handed. Like mm. I literally could not pass left-handed. What an and I don't know how mm. I managed to get, I don't know how I managed to get away with it. Mm. And just through um, working with him and him backing me. I mean, I remember we, I, he used to tell me to leave prep. I used to leave prep, I'd bunk prep, go to his classroom and would practice passing <laughs> for like two hours. <laughs> during prep, would practice. You'd say, listen, do all your homework and whatever during the day if I didn't have sport on. And yeah. then in the evenings, I'd go to his classroom and would pass balls the whole time for like two hours. And that kind of just helped me build uh, build confidence in my pass. Yes. And, you know, it was one of the best decisions I made because I made first team rugby the year after. Yeah. Um, in 2009. Mm. I was the starting scrum off. Mm. Um, and then um, I missed I missed Craven Week trials because I chose cricket. I was captaining the cricket side. Uh, and yes, you went to talk to the UK. That. I remember that, yeah. I, yeah, so I missed I missed trials um, because I I said, listen, I'm captain of the cricket side, so mm-hmm. that's where that's where I need to go. And we went on a mm-hmm. on a tour to the UK. But mm-hmm. then in my final year um, of matric, ended up playing Craven Week. So and there's a, a story, a guy who backed me, who supported me, who worked with me, and we achieved the goals that we had spoken about in um, yeah in my. Final yeah, in my in my under sixteen year after we finished the season, that's phenomenal, and I think that's that's wonderful. And I think I don't we under maybe maybe underestimate the impact what that guy had towards rugby at yeah. high school at that particular time. I remember my class is relatively speaking is a very small school in the global yeah. context, in the grand context of high schools in South Africa. Like at most, you have five hundred yeah. boys, and generally we. we as a school, they would they would punch above their weight significantly against other big schools, and not yeah. really produce Springbok. Springbok on a thing that yeah. was a thing that, but when he was there, Mr. Combrick, it was like with Patrick Landy, Ruan Combrick, Ron- Patrick Saliers, Ross yeah. Conier, um, yeah. you know, like Mark, like Mark Richards, SA Sables. Mark Richards, SA Sables, you 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 for for Zim for Sables, Guy Conier, like when he was there, the production of international athletes for our, our rugby stars was right. It was wild. It was wild. I remember I look back. I said, "Geez, of course, it was a bunch. It wasn't only one coach, right? There had other coaches there as well. Yeah. But I think I know he, he played a, a significant role in terms of the culture of rugby at the school at that time. And I think yeah. that story speaks to his influence. Um, Definitely. Um, at at the school, you know. So wild. So okay. So cool. So so now basically we've done five years. Now we're saying we're at this crossroads. We were trying to choose if I'm correct between rugby and cricket. We say, ah, yeah. You mentioned that you went on cricket tour earlier, and you are remember from if if I remember correctly, cricket could have easily have been a career opportunity as well for you. Yeah. Um, what was that decision like? And when you look back, would you have made? Would you have chosen any other way? Um, yeah, this is a tough one. Cricket, yeah. for me, I believe, was my number one sport. Um, I was definitely a better cricketer than I was a rugby player throughout Both my high school career. Serious cricket player. You're serious. Like, yeah, serious. serious. I, yeah, you're nice. Time, yeah. The amount of, I mean, I, I worked hard in both sports. Don't very, get me wrong. Very, I, very. I, 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 I completely believe in hard work, and I always used to put. A lot yes. of work into into both sport, but yeah. I mean, just from when I was under fifteen, I I was so shocked. I I made the Natal under fifteen cricket side. Don't know mm. how. Um, mm. And then to top that off, they saw something in me and they made me captain. I was like, "What mm. is going on that. here?" I remember. Yeah, um, I remember that. Then in my um, in my it was my C block year. Mm. I made the under seventeen. Uh, Natal cricket side mm. and they made me captain there and I was like mm. no this is it's this is ridiculous year. and then my B block year mm. I captained the Natal under 19 side mm. <laughs> when I was only in in in, uh, in B block mm. and I captained the first cricket side also when I was in B block um, I think mm. I was the first ever uh, mm. B blocked to captain the cricket side in the school's history that had never been done before 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I was a big and I was There's playing a big really deal. good. There's a big deal. I was playing really good cricket, and it wasn't just mm-hmm. the leadership point of view, but just in terms of my performances as well. You know, I was sure. racking up runs. I was keeping mm-hmm. very well. Mm-hmm. So cricket was cricket was the dream for me. I think up until my final year of school. I think yeah. that's where I made the decision to not play uh, cricket. Why? You know, um, so, like I said, in my under-17 year, well, in my B-block year, I made the Nassau cricket side. Mm. And in my final year, I'd had a good good season. I'd had a good year. And yeah. I was hoping to make that side um, again. And then the rules changed. And, you know, with South Africa and the coaches system, it's a massive thing. Um, mm. I ended up missing out because a foreign player was now counted as a white player. So, yeah. therefore... Um, a black South African cricketer had to yes. be picked ahead of me, ahead of and that's when I, yeah. that's when I missed out. And I was like, you know what, I I'm done with this. I yeah, and I kind of lost my passion for cricket. Because and I remember you had been you had been involved the whole way throughout the age groups, and then I had been involved the whole way through. Yeah. I was in the system. Uh, I remember at the time, um, in my in my matric year, right at the beginning of the oh sorry end of my B block year, mm. my grade 11 year, I remember the Zimbabwe cricket coach was coming to, he would fly to South Africa to come and watch me play. It was uh, the late Kevin Curran at the time. Um, he would come and okay. watch me play. He was flying in, he was, he was bringing me kit, he was bringing me bats. Like they were trying to, they were trying to get me to they come play. To recruit, like, like hectic. I was like, I was like, this is crazy. They're sitting me yeah. down and talking contracts and all of that. Um, I made this Zimbabwe under 19 cricket side without going to one trial. I was literally on the plane to go to Australia for the World Cup because of what he had seen. So cricket was the, and I think the reason why I didn't end up going on that tour was I needed to make a decision now on my matric or cricket. I was going to miss six months of the year. I'd been, Uh I'd been named, I'd been named a school prefect, head of house. Yes. Um, I had my 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 CACs, my grade eights to look after. I mm. obviously had my my academics, and I was yes. going to miss the, my final rugby season. Mm. So those I had to make a very tough decision, and I turned yeah. it down. And I said, "Listen, after school, cricket is what I want to do." But then, mm-hmm. after experiencing what I experienced um, during that uh, that Natal um, yeah. selection. I just said cricket is not for me. And I just pulled the plug on that. Um, I'd gone to Craven Week a couple months before that. I mm-hmm. had uh, teams after me. Um, I got mm-hmm. offered a contract to Western Province. got mm-hmm. offered a contract to the Cheetahs and mm-hmm. a couple of other universities. So I had options. And I ended up going to Western Province. And I think uh, a good friend of mine influenced me uh, mm-hmm. to head over there as well, uh, Patrick yeah. Howard. Yeah. And we ended up going there. Um, Stian Klongo, who was our captain in my, my final year, deputy head boy, he also yeah. got a contract to go to Western Province. And yeah. Kweku Bozzi, who was a prop, first team prop, yeah. also ended up going to Western Province. We had four Michael Ars guys at Western the whole, Province. The whole gang. The whole gang went over. The whole gang, looking, yeah. It just looking, made, looking back, made the decision back, so much easier. It was easier. Looking back, were you, were you happy with that choice? Or do you ever have, do, have you ever had more to look and be like, very happy. Mm. Very happy. I mean, there, there are times where uh, I'll sit and um, I'll watch cricket and I'll yeah. be like, could have really, could have actually <laughs> played for Zim. Yeah. Potentially could have played for Zim because there was a time when I was um, on holidays, I'd come back and I would train with the Michonland Eagles. They had mm-hmm. offered me a, a contract to go play cricket for them. Mm. Um, so I was training with, with a lot of guys that that were playing for Zim. Um, Alton Shukumbra was the captain at the time. Uh, mm. Prosper Otsay was in the team. Um, yes. Registered the cover, who's a wicket keeper. He's a yeah. wicket keeper now. Yeah. Um, he was there. He had just started off. Kyle Jarvis was also there. So, yes. I was, you know, I was facing those guys. And these guys um, are all, Bob, you know, these guys are all like our biggest stars right now. Right? It's like, yeah. And they're our biggest stars. Mm. So, mm-hmm. and I, I felt like at the time I was holding my own. Um, mm. So, yeah, I... I look back at it, but to be honest, I definitely made the right decision. There sure. are times where I sit and I'm like, oh, 
could have played cricket, could but played cricket. Mm. Uh, definitely, definitely the best, uh, the right decision, I believe. Okay, cool. Well, I think yeah. What a what a conundrum to be in, but but thankfully, of course, it's it's worked out. I guess for the most part, um, on the yeah. positive trajectory. So of course now then we have of course like this rugby career right now we've 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 gone we've finished high school we have now this like we move, move to Cape Town of course and then what has and now and now of course now it's professional it's no longer high school it's now fully yeah. professional what has the professional journey been like going from I guess from province to you know whatever the journey has been like um, from yeah from then? <laughs> I think I think you know coming coming from Zimbabwe resilience is a big big word for us it's a big yeah, thing for us we have to be resilient in everything sure. that we do although i didn't spend a lot of time in zim uh during the the difficult times that we experienced mm. um you know it's still it still kind of hit me because you go yes. back on holiday you still get a feel of you wouldn't get the yeah. full um the full package of what our parents were experiencing but you yes. could feel it you yeah. know and yeah. i think that kind of um, helped me when I got to Western mm. Province because a lot of resilience had to be shown. I remember when I first got there, it's not a professional setup, it's not a professional rugby. Mm. You know, you don't really have someone babying you around like you would in mm. high school. It's literally mm. each man for himself. You're mm. vying for a spot. If you don't perform, you're out, the next person comes in. Simple as Simple. that. Simple as that. And I remember yeah. the first three months, the first three months that I got there, I think we started off with maybe 40, 40 guys or mm. yeah, around 40 guys. By mm. the three months, I think 15 or 16 had left and they just could not handle the heat. Damn. We did not touch a ball for three months. For three months, we were just running, just fitness, 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 yes. starting like early at like half past five, six. Yes. Um, and I remember our coach at the time, um, his name is Steph Null, and he actually works for Rugby Africa now. And I've met him a couple of times through, right. um, through Stables engagements. And yes. I remember him saying, we don't, kick this, we don't kick people out of the system. The system will get rid of the people that don't deserve to be in the system. And that's literally what happened. Like, if you could not handle it, the system would just remove you there's, by itself. There's, there's, they did not have to be. There's, there's the door. There's the door. They literally did not. They literally did not have to do anything. The system just removed the people that could not handle it. So that was really good. Um, obviously, you when you get when you get to the academy, you're in the academy. You're just living as boys in the academy. Um, you train together, and you get the whole uh, professional feel. Mm, mm. Then um, after the three months, you start playing club rugby. Mm. Um, and then two months into club rugby, then you have Western Province trials. So mm. we had Western Province trials, and then now it's like all the guys in the academy plus guys on the outside because there are some guys that were talented um, yeah. at school. But it, They're really good yes. players, but then they just mm. decided to go to university instead right. of into an academy. So right. people like them would come into trials, um, mm. and I had a blind of a trial, ended up making the, the team. Huge. And we played and, in the under nineteen. Okay, got you. You played the under nineteen tournament. Yeah, we play, yeah, I played in the under nineteen Curry Cup, uh, where we we did really well. We made we made it through to the semis, and then ended up losing to the Lions at Ellis Park. Um, wow! So that was pretty special. Just getting the opportunity to play in these big stadiums was yes. unreal. Like, absolutely unreal. Super special. It's like you're getting a taste. It's like yeah, you're in the big franchise. You're getting a taste of what is almost there. Um, who are some of the yeah. players that you played that, that you might know just, just very quickly um, in, in, that, in that team? Anyone would know? Or? Um, so uh, Patrick Howard, he's, uh, he's played for Munster. He's currently at Ealing, uh, Trail Finders uh, at the moment awesome. in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, Dylan Lates, who's a Springbok now, uh, playing in Rochelle. France at La Rochelle. He was our sure. fly half. Uh, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head who else was involved there. Dean Hammond. Um, Dean, Dean Hammond. Dean Hammond, uh, Dean Hammond played towards the end of the season. Corbis van Veek was playing for Leicester Tigers. Um, and then uh, I played I played a game for the under-21s. Uh, mm -hmm. Came off the bench for one game. I remember mm -hmm. playing with guys like Sia Kulisi. Uh, mm -hmm. He was 
he was there. Ibn Isabeth was there. Uh, Nizam Carr. Uh, they, they had all the big icons. Names. They had all the big, all the big <laughs> dogs. Cool. And I was just past, I literally remember going to training mm-hmm. and I was just like, oh, like what is going on? And they, <laughs> they went... They weren't even in the main side. They were under 21s. Bro, but, but even then, but but even then, even you, even you're like, this is a squad. This is a, even then, even you're like, I was like this is Robin's this team, team is a squad. This is a team. Huge. So yeah, that, that year was pretty cool. And um, I did really well. Uh, initially, I started off the bench. And mm. then I started playing really well and ended up starting right mm. the way through into the semifinal. Um and then after that, I didn't get a contract. So I was kind of just weighing up my options, like, what am I going to do now? Um, and what was, that, what, was that, at, what was that feeling like? What was that? What was that? So you, you want to say, man, I'm in the province setup. I've got a taste of under 19, a taste of under 21. Yeah. I'm thinking I might be in the mix here. Like, let's see what the coach is saying. I was, so, thinking I, was in the, yeah. I was thinking I was in the mix. I've been called up to the under 21s. I was training with yeah. them. I played a game for them. So I was... I was like, surely, surely I'm getting I'm, I'm I'm in this thing. I'm gonna yeah. get something. Yeah. And then nothing came. So I was kind of um you know very disappointed, obviously. Um that yeah. I hadn't got anything. So mm. now I was just trying to scratch and think about what exactly I wanted to do. Mm. Then I got a phone call, very random phone call from uh one of the managers at Western Province. And they said, I remember this call so clearly. Um, mm. I just come back from the gym. He called me and he's like, where are you? And I said, I've gone back home. Um, like, because I, because a lot of the guys that were staying, uh, or the, the guys that had got, got, had got contracts had to stay for like mm. an extra week or so. Mm. Uh, and I said, no, I flew back home because obviously I didn't get a contract and stuff. And then they were like, how soon can you get on a flight to come back to South Africa? And I was like... Why? So now I'm thinking maybe there's a contract that's come to yeah, this, yes, or yes. something. And yes. then they were like, no, um, Darby Turan, the S under 20 coach, wants you to come to trials. And I was like, what are you talking about? What? And he's like, yeah. What? He watched you play in the mm. final, wants you to come to trials. I was like, mm. this is wild. Yes. I was like, this is crazy, man. Yes. And obviously, in my head, I was like, I have no South African heritage. I don't have a South African passport. And the guys at Western Province know this. So they I'm sure they would have told them. So maybe yes. there's something that I'm I, missing. Maybe there's a loophole. Right. Or yes. There's something. Yeah. Let me know complicated. I was like, listen, mm. I can get on a flight tomorrow. Got on a mm. flight, went to Kimberley. Yeah. Got to Kimberley. I remember walking into the hotel. I came a day later than everyone else. Yes. Walk into the hotel and I'm seeing the big names, the big dogs. I'm just yeah. like, I'm starstruck. These guys are my yeah. age. But, <laughs> but you're still like, yo, even, even I've seen, like, seen the Jan Horsens, the Paul Yodans, the, the I was just like, this is and they won that wild. year. They won, they won that World Cup that year. They won that World Cup. They, they won, that World, won Cup. that World Cup. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, what is going on? So we played trials and then at the end of those trials, so there are 100 guys at the, 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 the first round of trials, 100 mm. guys. I was like, this is wild. Like, there's no chance. There are probably like nine scrum halves or something crazy like that. Sure. End of the, end of the, the it was for three days. End of the three days, my name gets called to come to second round. I was like, what is going yeah. on? This is yeah. crazy. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm on a Zim passport, but I'm not, I'm not obviously saying this to anyone. I'm yeah, just, just, just going quiet. around with like, hey, I'm here, I'm here. I'm just getting this, with the this, flow. I'm like, this, maybe I'm here they, they know what they're doing. Sure. Go through second round, go to the third round of trials. I get, my name comes up for that. And I was like, no, this is crazy, man. Anyway, mm. carry on, carry on, carry on. Now, third round of trials, a squad was trimmed. I think it was like 40 something, 45. Right. And then that's when they started asking for details now, like passport details and ah, all of that kind of stuff. Also, are you like, guys, I think I'm in the mix here, boys. I think I'm in oh, the mix. Me, here. I was literally like, <laughs> I, think I was, I'm in the mix. I remember here. like speaking, <laughs> I literally <laughs> like speaking to my mom. Because I, I told my mom when I left, I was like, Your mama, I think these guys mama, made a mistake. Yeah, I'm probably yeah, yeah. just going to just go and I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. And then I keep going. I keep going. And then I was like, I don't know what's going on, but they just keep, mm. you know, calling me back. And I was having a good mm. trial. I was playing well. Mm. 
And then the passport thing came up and then obviously I had to give in my documents. And then they were like, mate, why didn't you say anything? And I was like, I thought you guys knew all along. You guys would have known. You guys would have known. Yeah. Where's the province guy? Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a cool experience just to know that I made the final 45. Um, I think psychologically, you're like, nah, but I'm here. Like, okay. okay. I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Like, and, you know, there were, yeah, like, yeah. So there were some big names and I, I, could, I could match them. You know, I could, like, mm-hmm. I could play like them or even better. Yeah. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, but I still didn't have a plan. I still had no plan. So yeah. I decided to go to the UK. Yeah. Uh, just kind of see how that goes. And figured, and what, was that, what was that, what was that, and, like, the, the, I guess the emotion-wise, that period? Because now you've come off, like, Michael House, like the Quaven Week, you've done the Western Province, you've done, you know what I mean, like quite highly decorated, I guess, up until this point, right? Now we're trying to figure it out, yeah. kind of scrambling here. What was that emotionally? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, it was, it was a very, very tough uh, couple of years in my life where I literally had no plan. I was, I still had a dream of playing professional rugby. That was my thing. Sure. I, Sure. trained like I was a professional I made sure that I, I I treated myself like a professional in everything that I was doing because I still had the belief that I was going to be professional but I found myself playing in um, National 3 when I got to the so, UK so, so maybe the context so, like, there's prim, so, so there's Prem Premiership Rugby Saracens prim, Bristol yes then there's Championship, championship. and then there's Right. After the championship, there's national one, Ooh. then national two, Ooh. national three. Meanwhile, we're so playing, was, at uh, yeah, playing, we're playing at province. We're playing at province. And, uh, and I was in SA, SA under 20. And now damn. I've gone to fifth division in England. And it was a very tough, tough time because you, yeah. you lose motivation. You're, yeah, you're asking yourself, yeah, is, this yeah, really am I crazy? Is, is this really for me? Am I mad? Am I mad? Yeah, is this really for me? And I think, I think there were times, you know, where like, um, uh, sure, my parents were like, they wanted oh. to probably say, Listen, I think, you know, we need to give this a we need I to think. we need to give this a bit of a you know, put it to the side and focus on something else. But I just kept pushing, yeah. I pe- yeah. kept pushing. I, I met a very good, uh, very good guy. Uh, his name is uh, Jimmy Terrell. Sure. Awesome, awesome guy. And he got me involved. He was an ex player, played with yeah. um, played with Owen Farrell. He was mm-hmm. a legend at, at, at uh, during his time when he was playing. Just very sure. unfortunate that he um, got injured a couple of times and had to retire. But mm-hmm. I met him. He became a mentor, looked after me. And he got me involved in the Saracen Sevens. Mm. Uh, played mm. a couple of tournaments for Saracen Sevens with some some big names um, mm. from Saris. Uh Neil de Kock was one of them uh, who yeah. played with me. So that was pretty yeah. cool because I used to look up to Neil de Kock. Yeah, at the um, and I remember playing. Yes. Yeah, and I remember playing like in in tournaments against uh, Harlequins and and um, and all these prem teams. And that was pretty mm. awesome. Like for me, that was huge. We were playing uh, Paul Saki. He was playing for England. He had played Paul for England like Saki. a year before. For, yeah, he played yeah, for England yeah, yeah. the year before. I was, I was playing against him. So that was, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. pretty awesome. Playing for Saris opened up doors for me to play for Zim because that's when I was approached by Zimbabwe Rugby Sevens um, mm. if I was interested uh, in playing for them. They were playing in London. Um, yes. The one weekend and they invited me to train with them for the week and mm. that's when i first got a taste of, of Zim- zimbabwe rugby huge so so we've, so we've got we've moved to the uk trying to figure this thing out and say guys let's go to the uk and roll the dice and, and see what happens there yeah and for and for i guess a year and a half two years it's just not clicking we're training not, we're not it's just it's deep um thinking but did you ever think about maybe maybe what well, was the belief always there that now at some point something will kind of come up work out for me or it was, it was. like maybe i oh i don't know i don't know you know yeah i definitely had those days i definitely had those days where i was like oh, you know 
it's not happening. But at the mm. same time, I was so driven, so determined to mm. uh, to to make it. I literally yep. told myself, "Listen, you have to make it. You have to, have to, have to make it. You don't have a choice." There's no you literally no need to keep pushing. <laughs> if There's times no are tough, you keep pushing. And I mean, I was very lucky that I had a very supportive mom, um, yeah, who encouraged me, who who helped me, who pushed me. Uh, you know, days yeah. when I was down, when yeah. I couldn't anymore, I felt like giving up. You know, she'd always, always be there and saying, listen, just keep pushing, keep pushing. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. So that's yeah. where I find my strength. I also find my strength in my brother. Yes. With such a close relationship. Yes. Um, and, you know, he was always just pushing me, always pushing mm. me. Whenever I wanted to give up, he says, no, it's, you can't, you can't give up. Just mm. keep, just keep going. Things are going to happen. Things are going mm. to happen. Mm. And, you know, I'm glad that I stuck it out. You know, Zim Sevens yeah. came and then, yeah, I was literally on playing on the circuit Beautiful. a couple wow. of years later. That's wild. I think maybe you, that's, that's such a wonderful story. And maybe speak a little bit about your mom and, and, and family support. I think yeah. yeah, we, I guess, are the first generation in many ways in which it is for the youngest involvements. Whereas if you're a young black Zimbabwean, it is possible to have a professional career um, yes. in sport. However, yeah. when it was a thing that was like, I'm sure when you were trying to uh, pursue this, you were very, it was an anomaly. It wasn't a common path. And in many yeah. ways, like I'm sure people looked at your mom and said like, are you serious? Like this is not a thing yeah. that young black Zimbabwean boys do, right? This is not yeah. a common career path. So I guess maybe from your side, like how much, tell some stories about some of like the support that, the, you know, your mom's given you throughout this, your journey, you know, in yeah. those particular times yeah. when it hasn't been as, as glamorous to do so, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm so, so blessed to have, um, mm -hmm. you know, my mom, she has always been there for me. Mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. just my, just in supporting me, being there for mm -hmm. me, you know, if she could travel to come and watch a game, she'd always come and watch a game, regardless mm -hmm. of wherever we play, she'd make a plan mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to be there um, to watch me. And like I said, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, there were times where, you know, you, you, you're just down and out and you're like, I don't see anything happening. I'm playing in the fifth division in the UK and yeah. nothing is happening. She'd come and watch me play. She'd come and watch me play in that in that fifth division, and she keep encouraging me to just keep working even hard. Then, to keep, even, even then, whatever, whatever even the level, then. whatever the level, yeah, yep, whatever the level she was there, she told me just keep working hard, keep working hard, keep believing. And like you said, a lot of people would have questioned and said, "Listen, what, like, what's going on?" And you know, you know, saying. you know, you know that you know that typical. Uh, Zimbo question that, that that Zimbo parents ask, and I'll translate it. I should have my sports. I should I should have my sports today. Should I should have my sports? Should not marry today. I should not marry. There's no like there's no money in this. Basically, the translation is there's no money in it. You know because oh, I think yeah. our parents, our parents, based our grandparents, they probably would have been telling. Our parents like listen. You have to be a doctor. You have to be a lawyer. A lawyer a like lawyer, that's teacher, how. Whatever, but whatever. obviously, sure. times had changed, and um, sport had gone professional. It was it's literally you know you can make a living out of it. Yes. And yes. Um, and I, and she just believed in me. She saw the hard work that I put in, um, mm. and she yeah, she just, she just told me never to stop, but just to keep chasing my dream. And she's mm. yeah, she's supported me all the way. Mm. She's the greatest. Okay. Okay, oh, cool. Special. So she, she's a special, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Okay. So, okay. So maybe just last couple of things. We've then, of course, made the transition from, we've gone through, now we're on the circuit. We're now playing for Zim. Now you're going to be the captain. Amazing. Um, yeah. Most recent club you played for, of course, was, was Jersey Reds um, in the championship. So, of course, now we're yeah. really like, you know, were playing top level rugby as well. What was how did yeah. that even come about? How did how did that opportunity come about? Oh, you were playing sevens for a while, right? So what happened there? I was, yeah, I was playing sevens for a while, and um, I just enrolled into university, uh, the University of Johannesburg, and I 
played right. Varsity Cup right. under mm. a couple of years. Mm. And my time at UJ was coming to an end and I still did not have a plan. So in my, my second year at UJ, I had an amazing, amazing season. I was playing mm. some awesome, awesome rugby. Mm. Got a couple of offers. I remember the Greek was offered me a contract. The Pumas offered me a contract. But mm. with me taking that contract meant that my studies would have to come to a halt. Yeah. But I said to myself that if these guys came knocking on the door now, it will come again. Sure. So I took the gamble and just said, nope, it's fine. Um, I'll see you guys. I'm going to carry on my study. Yeah. yeah. Third year came, nothing came up. No one Absolutely was nothing. On no one was saying anything. I wasn't yeah. really starting much. I was starting one game, benching the next game. Yeah. I wasn't starting. So I was like, Hilton, what did you do? You had an opportunity and you let it go. Yeah, and I was down yeah, and out. Yeah. Um, went through a very difficult time in my life then. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, you know, I was struggling because I just did not know what I was going to do. Yeah. Then I remember I had met this agent when I was in my first year uh, at UJ. Met him through another guy that I played with. Yeah. Um, took my contact details and, and we never spoke for two years. Mm. Out of the blue... Um, I get a message on my Twitter and that was very strange to get a message on my Twitter and it was this guy Anthony Johnson he's an agent mm. and he said Hilton I'm trying to get a hold of you please drop me your email drop me my email and then he says please can I call you he calls me and then he says um, so yeah we met a long time ago but I, you know uh, what are your plans and I said listen at the moment I don't have anything and then he was like okay cool um, there's a team called Jersey Reds. They are mm. wanting you. So, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And he was like, no, um, I had a conversation with the coach and they saw your highlights and they want you. Mm. Would you be interested? And I was like, what do you mean? I was so mm. confused. Mm. I thought it was like I thought it was like a joke or a lie. Or because, because for a while you're just a you did not and this, this you're not getting any game. Well, it's not as much game as now people are saying. Right, right. I'm not getting a game. And I was like, uh, and then he's like, okay, let me call you back. I did not hear from him for like another day or two. Sure. Um, then he calls me again, but this time he's calling me at like twelve midnight, and I was like, this is. Like, this is weird. And he was calling me for a number mm. I didn't re uh, recognize. So I didn't answer. Then he called me again in the morning, didn't answer. And then um, eventually I answered. And then he was like, Hilton, please go check your... I'm trying to get hold of you. Oh, I was trying to get hold of you. Please go check your email. So mm. I'm like, okay. Email comes up. Open the email. There's a contract. And then he's like... Jersey have offered you a three-year uh, three contract. Um, um, and then in the email, he like, he like put their website and where Jersey is. He's like, go and have a look, speak to your parents, come back and let me know what you think. I was just like, this is, this is crazy. I was like, this is wild. wild. Like, what is going on? And I was like, this is a scam. You're lying to me. He's like, I promise you, it's all legit. Went through the contract. I remember calling my mom and like literally she just started crying on the phone. Like could wow. not hold it. And I was like, Yo, this wow. is unreal. Wow. I remember, I remember running to your place because we used yeah. to live like very close to each other. I lived under it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think this. you were home. I don't think yes. you were home. You were home. I think you called me I like five missed. Yeah, I had a lot of missed calls on my phone. I'm saying, what's why am my phone being blown up like this? Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then oh, I was just like, yeah. and that was it, man. Literally oh. all my, the years of hard work was just shown in that. that email. I was just like, Oof. I can't, I can't believe it. I literally could not believe it. Oh, and mate, they've been so, like, it was so amazing. And then a couple of months. It just gives me, it gives me it gives chills. goosebumps me just, chills. Just, just, just thinking about it. So we have, West, we have, we go from Zimbabwe to South Africa. Yeah. To this opportunity called Michael House, which is a very like prestigious school, which is like a terrific blessing. 
we through by virtue of my class we get some assistance we help we then go to KwaZulu Natal Sharks we go to Western Province we have a we we do a trial at SN20 we get into 45 we we go to of course um the UK we take a little bit of a Take, take a break. We go to detour. We go to the province. We go to take a de- take a detour. We go to the UK, but then still, come out of that. We take a little bit of a devil in Saracens. We're playing some Zim Sevens now. We become the captain there. Then we also then go to. So there are all of these like terrific highlights, but they're also like, in between yeah. each highlight. There there have been some gray areas of of difficulty yeah. um, and challenge. What I do here though is, you always come out of it. Um, I think, and the question for me has been like, what has been like the most influential? How how influential? How have you dealt with those in between periods? And has your faith been a significant contributor to how you manage in between those? And how have you kind of like coped? Because it's tough, you know. In some of the, you've had these illustrious big moments, but how have you coped yeah. in between those those mountaintops? <laughs> faith has definitely played a huge part, and I think sure. um, it. I definitely. Um, grew a lot in terms of my faith during those difficult times. Um, sure. and, and also just the people that I had around me. I mean, mm. I had my brother, I had my mom, I had mm. you, just, mm. just a lot of family around me. Um, mm. Also, I'm a very family orientated person. Um, yeah. So just having people around me to encourage mm. me, to push me, because we shared the same dream. Um, my brother and I share the same. I mean, we share the same dream up until obviously your injury. Yes, um, yes, yes. We share the same dream. We wanted it so badly, and we were working yeah. towards that. So you yeah. understood. You understood. I get it fully. What I wanted fully. You fully. fully got it. So yeah, you know, I could always like count on you to for for your advice and and mm. you know mm. when I was feeling down and it was nice that we're living very close to each other because mm. you know we mm. could have those conversations. And then my, obviously my brother was going through the same journey. Like he was going through his professional journey yes. as well. Yes. You know, so yes. he, he also knew what I would go through um, during the good times and the bad times. But yeah. I think for me, what really helped me was the people around me. They really got sure. me through the difficult times uh, because yes. yo, we, we went through a lot of difficult we went times. To a lot, to, to be <laughs> I love a lot of difficult um, so yeah, there's just just the support system is was next was absolutely amazing. So we are where we are now. We've had this. We've had so all, all of these highlights. We are now at the helm of Zimbabwe Sables. Um, the goal, I guess, is to what's the big goal right now? What is the big goal? What do you? What is the leg? What is the big goal right now? What is the legacy you want to leave behind? Specifically, I think, I think um, for Zim Rugby, after you, you know, yeah, whilst you're here and after you, I leave. think for, for me right now, the big goal is to help the team qualify for the World Cup. I think we've been starved off playing on the world stage for a very long time. There are so many talented Zimbabweans um, that have to leave the country to go to greener pastures. Uh, sure. to try and 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 build their names and make their names. But mm. I believe that if we get to a World Cup, that's going to open so many doors when? for people in this country. When? 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 When we go to the World Cup. When? That's right. Sure. When we mm. go to the World Cup, it's going to open so many doors for people in this country. It's going to mm. rejuvenate Zimbabwe rugby. And I think it's, that is that thing that we need just to get guys believing in in, in Zim rugby mm. again. Uh, mm. Because let me tell you what, there is a lot of talent. There is yeah. a lot of talent and that that has had to, like I said, go elsewhere to try and make it. To but if we yeah. can get it right, if we can get, when we get it right now, it's definitely going to get a lot more people wanting to be involved in Zimbabwe rugby. And I think for me, it goes far beyond just the World Cup. It's mm. to build a, a good path for others to want to yes. follow that, want to follow the, the journey that we're starting today. It shouldn't mm. just be 2023. We must be looking mm. beyond that. We yeah. want to be playing against 
the big teams. We want to be playing yeah. against the Argentines, the Australians, the Englands. Yeah. We want yeah. that. You know, yeah. we want our guys, we want our guys instead of going to the Sharks Academy, you know, there must be an academy here in Zimbabwe. Local, local our team. guys yeah. get there, develop yeah. their skills and want to play for Zimbabwe rugby. Yeah. And that is the legacy that I would like to leave. Yes, I was very mm. fortunate and very lucky enough to play overseas. Mm. But mm. right now I realize that I need to sacrifice mm. doing that to help my country mm. to get to where it, it should be, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it, obviously it's been, it's been very difficult because, mm. you know, at the end of the day, bills need to be paid and you need to look after yourself. And For unfortunately, sure. at the moment, at this present moment, the mobile rugby is not fully professional. Yeah. But I think we are on the right, right step towards getting there. We have the right people that are involved yeah. at the moment that can mm. help us get there. And I mm. definitely want to be one of those guys that is helping Zimbabwe rugby get to that, to get to that stage. That's that's what we all want, right? I think. Yeah. You look. You look at other countries. You look at. We almost bleed out talent like and they go elsewhere and they go and be terrific elsewhere so it's what we would love is the situation whereby we can almost nurture our own homegrown talent and sustain it over a long-term period yes that's almost first prize the question i have for you i guess is like how can people like myself contribute towards that um whether it's the work that you guys are doing towards the sables is it subscribing to you know you're interested in how can zimbabweans support the work that you guys are doing right now i know of course it's so on the corporate side but just on a yeah just someone like fans you know how can we get behind what what you guys are doing yeah so we we we've um you know through our manager jason moritz who's been absolutely amazing in this process mm-hmm. and the team that he's mm-hmm. working with they've opened up various platforms that will help our supporters engage with us a bit more almost get a day-to-day feel of what is happening in camp uh, what the guys are up to uh, and getting to know the players as well, because I mm. feel like a lot of Zimbabweans don't actually know who plays for Zim. You know, if you, if I right. ask you who plays right. the Springboks, you'll name them one to, one to 15, very one, easily. T- one to 15. 15. Twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we want to get to that stage where we're saying, hey, Jimmy, can you mention the Sables? And you just throw one to 15 and you one know exactly who they are. Yeah. So we, we, they They've been working very hard on the on the social media side just to make sure mm-hmm. that our our supporters know exactly what is going on. Mm-hmm. We've set up um, the Sables Rugby Network, which mm-hmm. is a network not just for for rugby, but it's for um, our supporters in the diaspora to find out what is happening um, within the camp, within Zim Rugby yeah. itself. Yeah. But also yeah. gives them an opportunity to engage yeah. with other Zimbabweans that are all over the world. So, mm. for example, if you were living in Edinburgh and you right. are looking for someone in Australia um, yes. who uh, you're looking for, for someone to supply you something, but from Australia, yes. that Sables Rugby Network will help you link up with mm-hmm. a fellow Zimbabwean who mm-hmm. you are going to support. Mm-hmm. You know, so that, those are the things that we're kind of working on. Obviously, the corporate side of things, we've had NetBank jump on board um, and that's, yeah. that's been awesome, especially during these trying times. Mm-hmm. Um, uni freight have also come on board yeah so yeah. hopefully hopefully you know with with time we will be able to get more more sponsors on board more supporters on board um to help our cause in, in qualifying for the rugby world cup in 2023 huge huge awesome i know i know i personally i've actually already i've um put my email in the sable rugby network i watched your guys game against zambia i said you yeah. i need to how can i get behind the work that you guys are doing so i definitely i'll uh, put my email down for that but i'll also share it with anyone who i think you know to want to kind of get behind the work that you guys are doing as well yeah um oh no we definitely but, appreciate that but hey span it's, it's been good chatting um super proud of the work um that you're doing i think you, we spoke about this interview we spoke about how you are deputy head boy how you're captain at high school for all these cricket tasks all these rugby sides i think in many ways, I guess the prayer is that all of these leadership opportunities have led you to this point. And if you could almost yeah. take all of these things that you've learned across all of these leadership opportunities to really, really like use those in a really mighty way, not just in your team yeah. now, but also for like 
all young Zimbabweans who want to have, who look up to you in many ways um, as as a leader for Zim, or in fact as a leader. Period. I think it'd be great if yeah. you, you don't take that lightly and, and become acutely aware as to you know a lot of people are watching you, and um, I know me knowing you, I know that that won't be that won't be in vain. And yeah, man, we just keep supporting you and keep watching all your games and checking out the uh, Sables Rugby Network and any other thing that we can do. Um, whether it's, of course, reaching out to you for other things, maybe or get your email address or whatever you, you can just share that with me and then anyone else who wants to reach out to contribute to the work that you're doing. So, yeah. man, I'm, I'm proud of you and thanks for the time, you know, really appreciate it. No, bro, thank you so much for having me and uh, yeah, for always backing me and supporting me. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And yeah, I just, I just want to thank everyone else, all, all Zimbabweans across the world for, you know, supporting our cause. You know, we, as I said, Zimbabwe rugby has been, or the Zimbabwean people have been starved off um, international yeah. rugby. And I believe that this is the time to do it. We have the right management. We have the right team. We're in the right direction in terms of our planning and how we want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I just rally everyone just to get behind us, whether support, whether you can jump on um, corporates to, to come, come on board. We would really yeah. appreciate your support. Um, we are going to go to the World Cup. We are going to represent Zimbabwe. We're going to have our flag flying amongst the very Talk best there. And, and, we want, and we want everyone on this journey with us. We don't want to leave anyone. We want to all go together. So mm-hmm. I just reach out and just ask that you know you support us and you keep backing us um but yeah man thank you so much for having me i really do appreciate it and you know i'm looking forward to um you know to having you in the stands when we play against new zealand at the stade de france (laughs) tell them i receive i receive all right amazing amazing all right h thanks so much for time i'm gonna stop i'm gonna yeah that's us that's us